Welcome. Let's have a look at some different example applications for multiple object tracking. As we're going to see, multiple object tracking algorithms can be applied in very many different settings and scenarios. And in fact, for some advanced technical systems, like autonomous cars, multiple object tracking is a necessary enabling technology. Multi-object tracking is about tracking objects that are moving. Exactly what we mean by moving objects depends on the context and what we are interested in. For example, it can be humans, such as football players, or pedestrians moving around in a city. It could also be cyclists of different kinds, like bicyclists in the image shown here, or motorcyclists. Where humans live, there are many different types of vehicles, ranging from small compact cars to large trucks. In other applications, we might be interested in tracking flying objects, such as airplanes or seaborne objects, such as small boats or large ships. Lastly, the objects of interest can also be animals or cells observed in a microscope. In common to all different applications of multiple object tracking is that we have to determine how many objects there are. We have to understand where each object is, where it is going, and any other properties or characteristics that we might be interested in. Lastly, an important aspect of multiple object tracking is that we want to study this over time. The historical origins of multiple object tracking can be traced back to the Second World War, when radar stations began to be used as warning systems against hostile aircraft. The basic idea is to let the radar sensor emit energy. Some of this energy is reflected by the airplane back to the sensor, as illustrated here. Based on the time it takes for the signal to travel from the transceiver to the airplane and then back again, we can figure out the distance or range from the sensor to the airplane. To this day, radar-based tracking of airplanes remains a common application for multiple object tracking. It is still applied for defense applications, but it is also applied in civilian settings. Private and commercial airplanes often carry a transponder that alerts others about its position. Of course, this makes it easier to keep track of the airplane. However, for redundancy and safety, radar stations are also used. A modern example of where it is important to keep track of moving objects is airport surveillance. The control tower is responsible for the planes that take off and land, and also for the planes that are on the ground. In addition, there are many other types of objects that move around at an airport, such as vehicles that fill the planes with uh, fuel or bring luggage to the planes. To avoid collisions at the airport, it is important to keep track of all these different objects. To achieve this, many different systems are used. For example, the airplanes use transponders to transmit their positions to the control tower. There are markings on the ground that can direct the pilots in the right direction. And for redundancy, ground radar stations are also used to keep track of the planes, because the ground radar is complementary to the other systems. The use of ground radar is especially important in poor weather conditions, such as thick fog, when it can be difficult to see the planes except for at a close distance. Historically, there have been accidents with colliding planes where a contributing factor has been a malfunctioning ground radar system. Another surveillance example is crowd surveillance. Here, multiple object tracking is used to keep track of humans that move around in some area of interest. In this example, a camera is overlooking a footpath. The pedestrians are not tracked as individual objects, but rather the objects of interest are groups of pedestrians. So on the left, you can see the video data with red ellipses drawn to identify the groups of pedestrians. On the right is a top-down perspective or bird's eye view of this scene. The edges of the footpath are shown in gray. Pedestrian detections are shown as red dots. The outline of the groups are shown by the blue ellipses. And the numbers is an attempt to count the number of individuals in each group. In general, crowd surveillance is useful, for example, for analysis and understanding of crowd behavior, planning of emergency procedures, and for providing security. Multiple object tracking is also applicable for different biological inquiries. In this slide, we see a short segment of microscopic video that is shown by overlapping multiple frames. 
The strings of round objects that can be seen are cells that have moved, and the colored lines represent the trajectories of the tracked cells. This particular image is from research in microfluidics, which is a promising technology for biological inquiries at the single cell level. Here, one interesting application is the study of single cell biomechanical characteristics, such as elasticity, viscosity, stiffness, and adhesion. And to achieve this goal, an algorithm for accurately tracking cell trajectories is important for modeling the flow, the forces, and the dynamics of cell properties. A fifth example application is pedestrian tracking using LIDAR. Here we can see some data that was acquired in an urban location. Video data of the scene is shown on the top, and we can see some pedestrians walking around. To the left, the 2D LiDAR data is shown, and the object tracks that result from processing this LiDAR data using a multiple object tracking algorithm are shown on the right. Tracking pedestrians in urban scenarios like this is very important, for example, for autonomous vehicles. If an autonomous or driverless vehicle is to be able to drive safely in an urban environment, it is important that it can track pedestrians and then use this information to plan its driving such that collisions are avoided. When an autonomous vehicle is used in urban environments, it is also necessary for it to be able to track bicyclists. In this example, 2D LiDAR data is again used, just like in the previous example, where 2D LiDAR was used to track pedestrians. On the top left, we see the field of view of the sensor, which is a semicircle with a sensor located in the origin. The bicycle is tracked from the time it enters the field of view, and the zoomed image is shown on the right. The object track is shown along with the 2D LiDAR measurements, which are visualized as dots. On the bottom left, the sequence of object estimates is shown. Again, if we consider an autonomous vehicle, it's very important for it to be able to track all bicycles in its vicinity so that accidents can be avoided. Tracking cars and other vehicles is also a common application for multiple object tracking. Here we see a car and three detections from an automotive radar, visualized as rectangles. The radar detections are used to track the vehicle to figure out its position as well as its heading and its speed. Vehicle tracking using automotive radar is used for adaptive cruise control in many modern cars. The tracking system is used to figure out if there is a vehicle in front of the own car. If that's the case, the estimated position is used to autonomously adapt the speed of the own car so that a minimum safety distance is kept. For adaptive cruise control, it could be sufficient to track only the vehicle that is right in front. However, for an autonomous vehicle, we have to track all vehicles. In this example, we can see video data from two different sequences that were recorded in urban environments. Vehicles have been detected and are shown as colored rectangles. This information is then fed into a multiple object tracking system that outputs estimates of the vehicle's positions and velocities. From a top-down perspective, or bird's eye view, we can see the field of view of the camera marked by the dashed lines. The tracked object's positions are visualized by the colored plus signs, and the ellipses show covariance matrices. Here's one more example. Let's consider the simultaneous tracking of individual pedestrians, groups of pedestrians, bicyclists, and cars, using data from a 3D LiDAR sensor. Here you can see the 3D LiDAR data, as well as different types of objects. Colored in green, we have cars, Orange is cyclists, light blue is pedestrians, and dark blue is pedestrian groups. Again, if we consider an autonomous car, we understand that we need to track all kinds of objects in order to avoid accidents. It is not uncommon that multiple object tracking is applied to track a specific type of object. However, there are many applications, such as this one, in which we have to track different types of objects and also figure out what type each object is. So, tracking systems are a key technology for many technical applications, 
in areas such as robotics, surveillance, autonomous driving, automation, medicine, and sensor networks. This course focuses on automotive applications. Therefore, we will illustrate the concepts taught in the course using examples from autonomous driving. Typically, in such a scenario, we have a driverless car. In order for it to function in an urban environment, it has to keep track of all the moving objects, such as cars, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Okay, great. Although we're going to focus on automotive applications in this course, I would like to point out that the theory, the concepts, and the methods that we discuss in this course apply generally. So in other words, what you learn from this course can be applied to many different tracking applications. Thank you for watching.